And welcome back, everybody. Thanks for sticking with us. Miranda Hofelt's our guest. She's the curator down at Munson Williams Proctor Institute. Not the curator. You've got more than one curator yes, down here. Yes, I have a boss. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Mary Murray is the head right. of the curatorial department in mm -hmm. the museum here at the, the Munson Williams Proctor Arts Institute. Is your job for the 19th century art, is that a new job or has it been here? The position has been around for uh, the length of time that the museum has been mm -hmm. open. Uh, and running. Uh, however, the, it was open for a while. The position was open uh, when the last person that held it retired. And so I'm very lucky to come yeah. in and, yeah. and enjoy it and work with such an amazing collection. And you've been here, you were telling me, since uh, March. So yeah. uh, welcome I, to Utica. Thanks. I got yeah. here like, <laughs> I got here and literally two days after I was here, the museum was closed for snow day. Okay. And I've never had a snow day before. <laughs> Like, well, wow. You're liable to get another one. Yes. You're liable to get another one. Uh, there's about 40 some pieces in mm -hmm. this exhibit. Yes. What's your favorite? Oh my gosh, the thing that we're sitting in front of, the war record that was that was done uh, sometime between 1880 and 1881. Mm -hmm. And it's it's a wonderful example of narrative war art. Now when you say war art, what do you mean? Well this the piece actually depicts a, a scene of a battle between the uh, Lakota people and the Crow people. And the Lakota are actually wearing the eagle feather headdresses in the battle, and the Crow are the ones with the ponytails. Mm -hmm. uh, and so you can make out the difference between the two. And it looks like the Lakota people are winning. Yes, <laughs> absolutely. Yeah. And it is, a, it is a scene of victory. And, it, and if you look closely, you can see uh, that the battle is pretty violent. There mm -hmm. are some nasty things going on. Mm -hmm. Do we know who, who did this? Actually, two artists did it. And if you look closely, the way that you can tell the two different hands is through the horses. Uh, one of the artists has a kind of thick-necked, small-headed horse, uh, mm -hmm. and the other artist kind of handles the horse um, in, in terms of it's much narrower and thinner mm -hmm. and snewy, I guess you could say. What's the material material that that's painted on? Well, it's really interesting, and this is the way in which we can see the impact of white settlement on uh, Native American art. Um, done in 1880, this is a moment in which the buffalo population uh, is down to almost 1,000 from 2 million in the 1860s. Uh, and so while this would traditionally would have been on buffalo skin, by 1880 they're using cowhide. Mm. Uh, and that's because, because of the de devastation of the, uh, of the buffalo population and also because you have settlers coming in and bringing cows and livestock. Mm -hmm. Do we know the names of the uh, artists? We don't in this particular piece. We do have a piece um, also in this particular space by Blackhawk, who was also a Lakota artist, and he was working in the 1880s as well. Uh, and um, he did something known as a drawing book where he did, it was a particularly harsh winter, and he did drawings in exchange for, uh, I guess you could say, um, credit at the local general store. Mm -hmm. And uh, it, it, that's in the form of a book? It's actually in the form of a book. Um, he made the drawings independently uh, of each other, and then the, the general store owner backed them in linen and bound them in a book. Mm. The um, uh, sale and acquisition of uh, Native American art, it isn't like buying a regular painting, is it? No, there are very strong uh, government regulations in terms of what can be acquired and what can't be acquired, how things are exchanged, um, and these are put into place to protect Native American art objects. Mm. As, is there anything in the exhibit, uh, Miranda, from, because uh, right up the road we've got the United Indian Nation, mm -hmm. is there anything in the exhibit from them? We have examples, and this is one of the nice things about being so close to the Fenimore and being good partners with them, is that they, although we're selecting the creme de la creme, we also wanted to include in that creme de la creme the best of Seneca and Oneida work. And so we do have a couple of examples in, in the show by a Seneca artist and also by an Oneida artist. Now you made reference to the uh, headdress. Mm -hmm. uh, can you talk about that? The eagle feather headdress, and again, when we were talking about this issue of 
what can and cannot be included. Obviously, eagle feathers, eagles are protected, mm -hmm. and so Native Americans can make art from eagle feathers, but um, the exchange of it and the sale of it, it becomes a, a, a major issue. In this particular instance, the headdress was made around 1900. Uh, again, it's Lakota, so it's the Plains people. And um, if you look, the reason that we have it placed so closely to the war record is that the people in the war record, the Lakota people, are wearing the eagle feather headdress. Mm -hmm. It's a sign of your status. It's a sign, the longer the, the tail feathers are on the, on the headdress, the more important you are in society. So it, it has a kind of hierarchical element to it. It can only be worn by warriors. Um, now, the drawing that you see, the war record, um, actually they're wearing the eagle feather headdresses in battle. That actually would not have happened. Um, they were used mainly for ceremonial purposes. Mm. The uh, uh, item off to your left, what is that? That's a split horn headdress. And again, that would have been used in specific ceremonies. And if you come into the exhibition, I was just mentioning Blackhawk's uh, uh, drawings. There are actually drawings that show men, warriors, male warriors, wearing the split buffalo, excuse me, the split horn uh, headdress in these different ceremonies. So what we've tried to do is to show these works of art and the ways in which they play off of each other and have conversations with one another within the gallery space. Mm -hmm. Is any of this online? Yes, and in fact, you can go to the Fenimore Art Museum and they will have examples of, of different pieces. Although I think you, you get a really unique experience by coming physically to the museum. Uh, you can walk around these things, you can get a sense of the, the quality of the materials, um, and nothing really beats the up close and personal experience of a work of art. I hear you. Miranda Holfeld's our guest. We're talking about the new exhibit at Munson Williams Proctor Institute. It's going to be on until December 30th. There is no charge. Short break, right back. Thank you.